Welcome to my lecture online. I believe by now we know how to solve the simple type of rate problems, like the ones that we saw in the beginning of this series, but how do we deal with something where, for example, there's a different amount of time worked on the project? Here we have Bill that can complete a project by himself in 15 hours, and Fred who can do it in 20 hours, also working by himself. But if Fred starts working on it six hours after Bill started working on it, when will both complete the project together? Hmm. So they have different rates and there's a different amount of time worked on it. So the equation becomes as follows. The rate by the first person times the time of the first person plus the rate of the second person times the time of the second person equals the whole job done. And in this case, the first person is Bill and the second person is Fred. So the rate of Bill times the time of Bill plus the rate of Fred times the time of Fred equals 1. So how do we get the rate of the two people, Bill and Fred? Well, the rate is the inverse of the time they can do the job by themselves. So the rate of Bill is going to be 1 15th of a job per hour, 1 15th of the job per hour, because Bill can do the whole job in 15 hours. And the rate of Fred is going to be 1 20th of the job done every hour because Fred can do the whole job in 20 hours. So that gives us the time for both. And not the time, but the rate for both. But what about the time? Well, let's see here. If Fred joins in six hours later, then Fred spends six hours less than Bill to work on the task. So if the time for Bill is equal to t, then the time for Fred is equal to t minus 6 because Fred is spending 6 hours less than Bill to do the job. Now we have everything we need to plug into the equation. So the rate of Bill is uh, 1 15th times the time of Bill, which is t, plus the rate of Fred, which is 1 20th, times the time of Fred, which is t minus 6, equals the whole job done. And now the only thing that's left to solve in that equation is the time. Now remember, time is the time that Bill spends on it, who started working on first. So first we need to get rid of these fractions, and so we have to multiply that by the lowest common denominator, which in this case is 60. The LCD is equal to 60 because both 15 and 20 can evenly divide into 60. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 60. 15 goes into 60 four times, so we get 4 times t, plus 20 goes into 60 three times, so we get 3 times t minus 6 is equal to 60 times 1. Getting rid of the parentheses, we get 4t plus 3t minus 18 equals 60. We can collect common terms here, which is 7t, and move the 18 to the other side, which is 16 plus 18, because the sign changes when we cross the equal sign, so we have 7t is equal to 78, or t is equal to, when we divide both sides by 7, that would be 11 and 1 8, because 7 times 11 is 77, plus 1 is 78 over 8. So 11 and 1 8 of an hour. And of course, since t is equal to the, the time of Bill, that would be Bill's time. Bill will spend 11 and 8 hours to work on the project, when Fred joins six hours after he starts, therefore the time for Fred, which is equal to the time of Bill minus six, which is 11 and an eight hour minus six hours, which is five, oh, did I say eight? Uh, no, I'm divided by seven. It's one. 11 and a seven hour, not eight hour, because I'm dividing both sides by seven. See what happens when you get lazy? I got lazy and I made a mistake. What I should have done is I should have said, okay, I'm dividing both sides by 7, which means that t is going to be 78 divided by 7, which is 11 and a 7. And that way, I wouldn't have made the mistake. Just one little step that I left out, and it ended up being a mistake. So we always should put every step down that we can. 11 minus 6 is 5, and the 7 hours, that is the time that Fred spends on it. Of course, Fred... I guess he was playing around for six hours before he got serious and came out to help Bill with his project. And that is how it's done.